Now, despite its largely youthful population, Africa is projected to have about 235.11 million older people in the next three decades. While social attributes, uh, social attributes such as educational attainment, level of economic independence, health and living standards of, uh, are significant variables that provide information about the living, uh, general living conditions of the aged in society. Studies show that not so much attention is given to the needs of the aged. As, the, as Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark the day for the old, advocates for the rights of older people are calling for concerted efforts in safeguarding the interests of the old. Dr. Collins Bedwajiman of the Center for Aging Studies at the University of Ghana joins us for more. Hello, Doc. It looks like you're muted. Um, is it better now? It is. I hear you loud and clear. So tell us a bit more. I never knew there was a Center of Aging Studies at the University of Ghana. Yes. Um, so it is good we are talking about it today. Mm. <clears throat> for the University of Ghana, for the past three years, we have had the Center for Aging Studies. And the goal was to prioritize research, teaching, and then developing people to appreciate why understanding the age is very, very important. <clears throat> Just as you rightly said, we have majority of our people growing gradually. We know Ghana is a youthful um, country. Africa in general is youthful. And what it means is that in the next 20 to 25 years, a lot of these people would also be moving toward the 60 years plus. So the goal for University of Ghana was to have this center that will prioritize research, mm -hmm. that will prioritize the training of people, how they can care for the aged, how we can continue to support um, policy drive, how we can also continue to promote awareness help people to actually prioritize the care for the aged, how we can continue to psychologically support healthcare workers to be able to prioritize the needs for these aged ones. It is for this reason and many others that the Center for Aging Studies of the University of Ghana was set up. So let's look at the work that you have done so far and what we are discussing right now. You're saying that in the next you know, few um, yes, we're going to have a huge number of aged people. Certainly. Um, if you look at um, from our press release, we mentioned the decade of healthy aging. Mm. That is UN's, one of UN's and WHO's agenda. Um, in the next 10 years, between this year, 2020 to 2030, how do we ensure that um, older adults, 60 years plus, they are living healthily and they are also accorded with the dignity that they deserve. Indeed, as part of the consultant working on this decade of healthy aging on behalf of the University of Ghana Center for Aging Studies, uh, with, the, with the support of Ghana Statistical Service, it is clear from the Ghanaian outlook that we need to do more to support this particular agenda. In the coming years, a lot of people will live between 20 to 30 years after retiring from age 60. So that means that we need to ensure people live well, people indeed have meaning out of their lives, even after 50, 60 years. Mm. You know, to retire from age 60 does not mean you are inactive. To retire from a 60 does not mean your life has ended. We do have university for the aged. And every year, we, we've realized in the countries where they have university for the aged, these schools are oversubscribed. Hmm. Go to China, Beirut, France, and other countries with university for the aged. That is the time they can learn a new skill. Look at what is happening now, technology. We can teach aged ones who are living by themselves how they can shop from using technological um, facilities and opportunities that we have, and many more. Mm. So the whole point is we need to reposition ourselves 
if 20 years to come, a lot of the youthful population of Africa will be heading towards 60 and plus, and we are likely going to live 20 years or more, even after the mandatory re retiring age, hmm. then we need to begin to plan. We shouldn't wait for it to catch up with us before we begin to develop capacity for the care process, before we develop awareness how you and I can adequately care for our mothers and our fathers, how we can support them in terms of their dietary conditions, how we can help them to protect how their cognitive functioning abilities are and all that. And that is the more reason why we want to promote this awareness. And if you yeah. look at the pandemic in general, it has also brought on board a lot of lapses yeah. we need to consider as far as the, the aged colleagues are concerned. Listen. A very interesting uh, analysis. I'm sure that w with, the, with the coming days, we'll be able to have talks on what we can do. Then now this is telling us a problem and what has to be done. So perhaps what we can do, uh, it's a conversation we can have another time. Doc, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. You're welcome. Dr. Collins Bedouajemai is of the Center for Aging Studies at the University of Ghana. Maybe you want to pass by, get some understanding of how you can help your aged uh, family members as well.